Hi, I'm Brian. And I'm Jamie. And on this episode of The Simple Homemade Life, we're going to be showing you what we've learned about using reclaimed wood. Real food. Organic gardening. DIY remodeling. And how to make it doable and easy. Simple Homemade Life. <laughs> okay, first of all, Using reclaimed wood is a good idea for a bunch of reasons. Yeah, in our last house, we were able to complete a hallway. I mean, it was a long hallway and we only used, uh, it was only about $50 using reclaimed oak flooring. And so now in our 100 year old farmhouse, we've had the chance to harvest a bunch of old boards and then to reuse them. And the boards came from the walls because it was all wood walls. And so being able to reuse those puts it back because there isn't much original left in this farmhouse, unfortunately. So that's one original thing we can put back. But just to be realistic, there are some negatives to using recycled wood. I don't know if we want to say negatives. <laughs> kind of don't want to bum you out. And in fact, if you kind of plan ahead and think ahead, you can overcome those challenges. But just, just know it's not, it's not quite as easy as using new wood. Besides just looking really cool, there are a couple other reasons why it's a good idea to use reclaimed wood if you can. Um, first of all, it really gives a vintage feel that new wood really can't. I mean, we can make it kind of look like it, but there's just something about the old stuff that gives it's authentic. Uh, second, you're not wasting usable wood. So this wood is all great. And in fact, old wood is usually much better. It's a tighter grain, it, it's wider, it lasts longer. So it's a great idea to reuse it for that reason too, just to save the environment and help the environment. Third, you can save money. If you're reusing the wood, you don't have to buy new wood. That is if you found it, because I do know there are some reclaimed places that charge you an arm and a leg for old wood. So maybe not so much then, but if you can find it and harvest it yourself, it's a really good way to save money. Okay, so now these are some of the disadvantages to working with recycled wood. And the first one is it takes more effort to harvest. It kind of slows down if you're doing demolition and like we had, we had hired guys to do demo work. And you know, if they're, the, they, they make less money if they slow down to carefully take apart the boards. So they just kind of rip the stuff out there, out of there. And when I had time to go and um, take down boards, I basically just had to um, tear, tear them out. I didn't really have time to um, pull the nails. And so that leads to the second challenge with recycled wood. And that's, you, you're probably gonna end up damaging the wood as you remove it. Um, in this case, as I said, I couldn't pull the nails. I just had to try to pry the wood out. Well, the, the rusty nails are stuck in there and the wood is brittle, that it's old. And so what'll happen is you'll damage a portion of the wood as you get it out. Another problem as you recycle wood is that you end up with a lot of the wood not being usable. So like you look at this one, I mean, if it's, I don't know, if it's nine inches or 10 inches wide down there, but look at this, this whole piece, it just, it broke off coming out. And I've had pieces where it's a nice board and you know, up the middle is some dry rot or insect damage. And so, I mean, that's the problem. You're, you're gonna have to harvest a lot more than you use. Another challenge is that old wood is not exactly in standard dimensions. And I've found as I'm putting it on the wall that not only is it, is it different in width, some of the, the ones that looked really similar like tongue and groove, but they were, they were a different thickness. They had different tongue lengths. Um, there's all kinds of little dimensional differences that if you just go to the lumber yard and buy a bunch of new wood, it's all gonna be exactly the same. So um, the, you can work around wood not being exactly the same size, the old wood, but it takes time and it takes some, some patience and, and a little bit of thinking. Here's the final problem with using recycled wood and it's the fact that you might not have enough. And so if you're starting up a wall with this really cool old reclaimed boards and you run out, well, what are you gonna do? You can't go buy more new wood that might look exactly like that, especially if it all came from one place. You could even get old wood, but the old wood might not match. Now you can get creative and do part new, part old, but really the thing to do is harvest your wood, see how much you have that's good, figure out the square footage of what you need to cover and then just take an inventory and make sure you have enough so that you can plan as you go along. 
the right tools can really help you deal with some of the challenges with harvesting reclaimed wood. Um, things like little bitty pry bars for digging out nails and then you want medium size and big pry bars and sometimes you just can't get the nail out so you got to use these nippers that can just cut the nail but sometimes you've got no choice but to cut the wood out and so that's why it's good to have a reciprocating saw usually called a sawzall I would carefully measure to get the exact dimensions of what you're trying to cover and then go and measure your boards and count them up and make sure that you're going to have enough wood to cover what you're going to do. You're going to want to nail the boards to the studs plus you need to know where like electrical and plumbing is. Like I happen to know there's a bunch of plumbing pipes in this wall right here. So go ahead and mark on the wall where the studs are and then as you're putting the boards up you'll know where to nail for tools that I found really helpful in getting recycled wood to fit, to cut it down to the right size. One of them is this kind of saw. It's a compound sliding miter saw. And what it let me do was cut extra wide width boards. And this is a cheap one. I didn't pay very much for it, but I did buy a good quality new blade. The widest uh, regular chop saw with a 10 inch blade can cut is about six inches. A table saw is really useful because it lets you cut boards so that they're all the same width. If you've got these old boards that are kind of different widths. And uh, what I really like about this one is it came on a stand. Uh, normally when you buy a table saw, it's just a little unit on top there. Sometimes uh, recycled boards can be really rough or just a bunch of different textures. And so this little belted sander has been terrific. Normally we use a palm sander, but I've been using this one to get the boards for the bathroom. And it's amazing how quickly it just smooths them down. What's really useful when you get your wood in there and it's just not fitting. There's some funny little piece holding it back is one of these they call it a os oscillating saw I've heard it called a plunge saw and it just vibrates and you can cut straight in with the blade and kind of get your final fit the number one time saver for putting boards up like we're doing for decorative is this brad nailer it's a cheapo harbor freight model I've got it paired with a cheapo Harbor Freight compressor. And uh, I did go to a contractor's place and get a decent hose because the one I had was so cheap. But this thing fires two inch brads and they just do a great job of holding the wood in. So if you look right here is going to go behind the vanity that's going to have the sink. And so that's where I put um, the shorter boards that couldn't make it all the way across. But for instance, on this section of wall where there's no place to hide a joint because it's just not gonna look great where they come together, I save my boards that could make it all the way across. Another advantage to having boards that can go all the way across is that they don't have to be the same width because they don't have to match up with anything. So, you know, I mean, that top board is thin because it's going to the ceiling, but the other ones are different by maybe half an inch or more, but it doesn't matter because there's nothing really to compare them to with your eye. I found that if I started low and went up, I could then rest the next board on top of the one I just did. 
but there may be reasons for starting at the top and going down. So all the places where my old boards butt together, even if I got them pretty close, they're just not perfect. The boards are bent one way or the other, or they just didn't quite line up. Or like with well, this one, they're a different thickness. So for all of these, I'm hiding them behind something. This will be behind the mirror. So don't get too hung up on perfection um, because the uniqueness is what makes using old reclaimed wood so cool. I mean, it's what, the look is wonderful. So you just have to embrace the imperfection. Yeah, and one more piece of advice, and I'm, I'm really not kidding about this. Make sure your tetanus shot is up to date. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know, but I've stepped on nails. I've been scratched by nails. When, when you're working around old wood and there's rusty nails, there's always that hazard. So seriously, if you're gonna be reclaiming wood, make sure that your tetanus is up to date. Oh, good tip, okay. On that note, we wanted to show you what we've been doing um, to the front of our vegetable garden. Okay, so this arbor was Jamie's idea and she had an example for me. And actually, it was really easy to do. It's, you can look at it, it's just a very simple structure. Um, it only cost about $100 in materials. I mean, once you had the, the posts in the ground and it, it only took a couple hours. So I, if you want to know how to do your own, I've got a video kind of showing how I did this one and how easy it is and take a look at that. I've got a link around here somewhere. I not only wanted him to do the arbor because I think it's just a great way to make it look cool in the garden and make it look fun and pretty, but I also really wanted to grow a grape over the top. We had grown grapes over the top in our other house and we just really loved harvesting table grapes. So as you can see, the one we planted is right here and this is a, um, a green table grape, seedless green table grape, and it will start growing up over the top and all we need is one because um, it, it will take over the side. In fact, we'll probably have to prune it. This is a little bit small for a grape. When you have a grape, you want a lot of room, but we'll keep it pruned and we'll see what we can harvest from it. And I wanted to mention really quick about the beds I put outside of the fence. Because the fence is for deer. We, we have voracious deer here, so we have to, anything that the deer will like has to be grown inside that fence. But there are a few things that the deer won't eat. And because we have this room outside of the fence, and we have lots of rocks on our property, I built the beds out of rocks. And I filled them with asparagus, which they're not supposed to like, but they did eat the one in the... I have four here and you can see one has been eaten. So we'll see how that works, but I read that they don't, they don't go for asparagus. Um, also onions. So this bed holds onions and onions are uh, anything that's got a smell they don't like. So we've got our onions planted here. And um, then in this bed over here are other things that the artichokes are spiny. So they typically leave those alone and the rhubarb the leaves are poisonous and that they leave that alone. These are bunching onions, so green onions that are going to be perennial. They'll come back every year and they don't bother marigolds because marigolds have um, a smell that they don't like. So we kind of have some beds out here that hopefully we'll be able to even grow more things. Well, it was so fun to see what that looked like. And you know what? I know the deer appreciate the whole look because we did that fence for them. Okay, coming up in our next episode, you're not going to want to miss this. We have this secret trick that's going to save you a lot of time and money with watering. And this thing will work um, if you have an automatic watering system like we did, or even if you're just watering manually. And it involves cutting up soaker hoses and putting them back together. Sounds fascinating. Okay, we'll see you then. <laughs> Bye.